Call this meeting to order, and uh, the invocation would be by Jack Baker. Father, we want to thank you for the love that you have for us, and we want to thank you also for this beautiful day that you've given us, and thank you for the rain that you've given us that we needed so badly. We ask that you be with our troops wherever they are and bring them home safely. We ask that you give us wisdom and guidance tonight in going about the business of the Cherokee people and the Cherokee nation. We ask your blessings on the Cherokee nation and the Cherokee people. In Christ's name we ask. Amen. 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 Thank you, Mr. Baker. Before we go to roll call, I'd ask that those of you who have a cell phone to please turn them off or put them on vibrate. Thank you. Uh, roll call, Ms. Miller. Bill Anglin. Here. Bill John Baker. Here. Jack Baker. Here. Arthur Connor. Joe Crittenden. Here. Meredith Fraley. Here. Don Garvin. Chuck Koskin. Bill Johnson. Here. Taylor Keene. Honey. John Keener. Honey. Jackie Bob Martin. Honey. Linda O'Leary. Present. Levine Shophouse. Honey. David Thornton. Present. 
Eric Karen Watts. A honey. Phyllis Yargy. A honey. We have a quorum. Next item is approval of minutes of the April 16 regular session tribal council meeting. I move to be approved. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion on the minutes? Any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, same side. Hey, um, Mr. Johnson, were you going to amend the agenda? I do, I do that now or after. You can do it now if you want to. Okay. Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, on the action of unfinished business, an item was inadvertently left off, and that was an act that's been vetoed by the chief, an amendment of LA 1916, the Cherokee Nation General Corporation Act. I'll move that it be included in the agenda. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Okay, we'll be added under action of unfinished business. Okay, the next item is uh, State of the Nation, uh, Principal Chief Chad Smith. Good evening. It's my pleasure to address our people and our council on this May 14th, 2007, State of the Cherokee Nation. First, as our, is our custom, let us pay respects to those who have passed this life. And with a moment of silence, I would first ask your attention to, you direct your attention to Mary Louise Mays, a full blood Cherokee who proudly served her country as a whack during World War II. And also Edith Alter Reed Tufel. She was an original Lottie, and she was laid to rest a few weeks ago in the Nowata Cemetery. Uh, with the, those and others that have passed in this last month, if you will bow your head and have a moment of silence. What else? Let me start with our veterans, our great honor and opportunity to uh, acknowledge our veterans. And Joe, if you'll come forward. I'd like to uh, share with you some very good news. Uh, Leonard Gouge, who is with our Indian Child Welfare Department, he came back and went to work last Monday for the first time in a year. In that year, he was stationed in Iraq in our service of the country. And we certainly appreciate him coming back. Tonight, we'd like to uh, honor Jim Barnarski, Jr., born at Hastings Hospital in Tahlequah, Oklahoma. Grew up in the evening shade near Vianne. He was inducted into the Army in September of 1967 after basic training with Fort Sill and Lawton for specialized artillery uh, uh, training. In March of 1968, he was sent to duty in Vietnam. While in Vietnam, he was signed to the uh, Saigon region. He returned to the United States in March of 1969 and was stationed in Fort Carson, Colorado. He completed his service as specialist form was honorably discharged September of 1973. Jim received the National Defense Service Medal, the Vietnam Service Medal with five bronze service stars, and the Vietnam Campaign Medal. Jim is retired and lives at Pinhook Corner near Vianne with his wife, Alice. Jim, are you here? Okay. Eugene Fox was born and raised on his mother's allotment, Mary Daughtery, of near Bartlesville, Oklahoma. Eugene entered the active service in December of 1942 in the U.S. Army. He was sent to New York and received training as a demolition specialist and engineer. Before his battalion left for Europe, they traveled over the eastern part of the United States training some of the young lieutenants for the work that they would be required to do when they reached Europe. Eugene's first overseas assignment was in North Africa in Casablanca before boarding a ship headed to England. The battalion stayed in the channel for many days after D-Day. When they finally landed at Utah Beach, they saw the results of war and the U.S. soldiers lost. His battalion repaired roads and painted sides to, ga to guide troops and eventually went into the sawmill business and operated 32 sawmills for a winterization project prior to the German counterattack on December 17, 1944. His next assignment 
was in Tuis Point, where the three rivers joined. There, the Company A, 51st Engineer Ta Engineering Combat Battalion, successfully stopped the German offensive. Eugene was back, sent back to the States in October of 1945 and received an honorable discharge in November of that year. His group, Company A, 51st Engineering Combat Battalion, received the Presidential Unit Citation, a French Medal with Silver Stars, the Good Conduct Plaque from Belgium. Eugene received the EAME Service Ribbon, service, Silver Service Star, Good Conduct Medal, and the Distinguished Unit Award. Eugene, could you come down and let us acknowledge you? sister battalion that worked with us and also uh, we <clears throat> served in there for several days and the only one that had a place where the MP would garden and the, all of our troops was going this way and we they said we go this way and they put us on a 25 mile line of defense with no more than a little 37 millimeter gun but we defended that 25 mile, and we were relieved by five divisions in order to take a break, and we never did get to take the break. But farther on, we got, I got to be a good soldier, I guess it was, but then I won a trip to England for seven days. It took me seven one, 31 days to make that seven day trip. <laughs> When I got back, the fellas had already built a bridge across the Rhine River, a pontoon bridge, capable of hauling tanks and trucks across there. And they did that under fire. We lost uh, hardly any men for the position that we were in. We had, I think they figured out 17 casualties for about 600 and men. But uh, a lot of places did come back with any men, but I know that's an experience that I wouldn't take a million dollars for and wouldn't give you a nickel for another one. Just like Part of our community service youth fund program, we recently had several Cherokee students serve as volunteers with a hospice organization. These Vianne Middle School students took part in the Threads of Love, a volunteer program in partnership with the Professional Home Hospice uh, Organization that provides crocheted ice items to hospice patients. And I had the opportunity to visit with them about a month ago, and they had a very compelling story, and a compelling story that uh, all of us should be uh, should learn or to relearn periodically. And her, their story was a very simple one. They wanted to help those that were slipping away to the next life. And they did it because it made them feel good. And our youth program is that we will provide funds, but they have to do community service. And I think the story that I understood from them and their sponsors and the community is that what they received was certainly more than the funding that we granted these kids and what the kids received was certainly greater than the money they received by helping the elderly in their last days in this of life. So I'd like to call upon Belinda Scroggins to tell us about their project and introduce the, the volunteers from the Vianne Middle School. Uh, Belinda? Oh, thank you. I'm the volunteer coordinator for Professional Home Hospice 
and it is a very rewarding job. And I don't, I really shouldn't say it's a job because it's therapeutic for me. I have used hospice, and I see the importance of hospice to help someone go on the journey. So when I was contacted about these children needing to get some community service, I said I can definitely use them because nothing better for a hospice patient to hear is to have a young person being willing to volunteer and use, and they go way beyond their volunteer hours. And then I, I explained to them what we were doing, and we've got a group in South Saw that's called Threads of Love. And they crochet and make uh, gift items to give to the hospice patients, and we give them to the families. We give them to the lo local nursing homes. Every time I go see a hospice patient, they have a gift, from, and it's from the children and from our Threads of Love. We call our uh, youth recipients the littlest angels because they definitely are. And when you see the sparkle in a hospice patient's eyes, knowing that they have helped them go on this journey, it's something you won't ever forget. But earlier, before I arrived here, I talked to Rob Boyd, and I asked him something, and I'd like him to explain something to you, what he told me. Rob, would you explain about what hospice? <laughs> Hospice is where people that are dying are sent home to die and spend their last days with their families so that they will die happy. That's what, pretty much what it is. Thank you. So we have several, you know, volunteers, but there's one that has really done some extra with me in the office, and I would like to introduce you to Ashley and Makisha. She's got something she'd like to read. Okay. Oh, see My name is Ashley Watts, and this is my sister, Makisha. We, along with other professional home hospice volunteers, are from Vian Public Schools. This is, we would also like the council to know that we are all proud members of the Cherokee tribe. And this is the second year that most of us have been participants in this program, the Cherokee Nation Youth Fund Program. And we want to thank Chief Chad Smith and the council for this program. Last year, as participants of this program, we worked on the new softball fields in Vianne. We worked on the Armstrong City Park, and we also worked for Relay for Life in Salisaw. This year, our volunteers wanted to help out with the terminally ill and the elderly, so we got in contact with Belinda Scoggins, who is the Professional Home Hospice Volunteer Director, and she explained to us what Professional Home Hospice does, and she put us right to work. With, through Belinda's guidance, we volunteers created yarn boxes and placed them in various locations. We collected yarn for the other professional home hospice volunteers to crochet lap throws, shoes, tissue holders, soap holders, angels, and etc. for the terminally ill patients and the nursing home patients. While collecting yarn, we also collected stuffed animals to give to the patients for Easter, and it just makes their lives more enjoyable and more comfortable. At this time, while still collecting yarn, we are also collecting flower vases. When one of the patients are feeling down, or we just want to say, you know, hi in a friendly way, we would send them over a flower, and it renews their hope. And this small act of kindness shows that someone still cares, and the small act of kindness is the best feeling you can have. I don't know what we'll be doing next, but one thing I'm sure of is that my fellow Cherokee youth volunteers and I have learned a lot about compassion, helping others, and what it takes to bring our community closer. Um, professional Home Hospice Volunteer and director, director of Volunteers, Belinda Scoggins, has made a big impact on my life. I have learned the value of a dollar by working 32 and beyond hours on this Cherokee Nation Youth Fund program. And the most important thing that I've learned is that it takes compassion and caring about others to really bring, make our nation strong. If we don't care about our people, who will? I'd like to say wado to Chief Chad Smith and the council members for helping our youth become strong, a stronger nation by working together and providing these programs so it will teach us how to learn to help ourselves and how to help others. I would also like to say wado to Belinda Scoggins for allowing our Cherokee youth to be volunteers for the professional home hospice and taking the time to actually teach us what it is and having the patience about working with us. Wado. And at this time, we would also like to present the council a small gift from us that the other 
professional Hamas was, have crocheted. solicit yarn when they got the yarn and brought it to the crocheters. Yes, a print and of one of those pieces that they gathered in the and uh, the crocheters did them. So this will go in the office and this keeps safe places for the church people. And I'd like to introduce yes. you to one of our threads of love volunteers. Sure, this is Virginia Ransom. Okay. She's giving them around before. people to recognize these kids <clears throat> you know they go out and volunteer and I'm sure you know on yourself but chief people need to know this lady and that's a good sort of segue transition from the young to the not so young, and I'd like to introduce tonight Helen Trask. She she's with us uh, with Eugene, and Helen, could you stand? And she is a spry young age of 99 years old. Thank you very much. Other program updates, the Cherokee Nation's Environmental Department was one of 13 organizations and individuals in the United States to receive the EPA's 7th Annual Clean Air Excellence Award for outstanding accomplishments in reducing air emissions. We were honored, we were honored in the community action category. With the end of the school year upon us, many of our Cherokee students are being recognized for the outstanding work for academics, leadership, and sports. First, Four Sequoia seniors, Diana Onco, Robin Wilson, Christina, Christine Panther, and Dina Squires recently received the Gates Millennium Scholarship. Are you folks here? Are Gates Millennium, will you stand? Thank you. And I believe, is it, um, Diana, didn't you receive also the uh, reconnecting the circle uh, essay question and received how much money? 
to, for her essay on why Indian tribes are important to the country. She was one of very ten uh, finalists and reward, uh, was rewarded and awarded a $2,500 scholarship for her work. So thank you all very much. You all have a seat. Uh, this Covenant Scholarship these four young ladies received is an all-expense-paid scholarship to the college of their choice. The Gates Millennium Scholarship is awarded to minority students who show outstanding academic achievements and leadership abilities. Fifteen Sequoia School seniors applied uh, for the scholarship. Eight were cho chosen as semifinalists, and four were selected as Gates Scholars. Diana plans to go attend the Oklahoma State University major in secondary education, focusing on Native American history. Robin plans to attend Rochester Institute of Science and Technology in New York. We're going to have us an engineer in environmental science, no less. Congratulations. Christine plans to enter the University of Oklahoma and major in Native American studies and education. And Dina plans to attend Northeastern State University and major in science and medicine. Sequoia Schools also announced its top ten graduating seniors for the class of 2007. There are Kellen Quinton, Kelly Brown, Dina Squires, Brian Allen, Case Hogner, Diana Onco, uh, Rihanna Tafoya, Hannah Cornell, Zach Goodrich, John Teehee, and Robin Wilson. So let's give our Gates, Gates Scholars and our other seniors a round of applause. So also, excellence in athletics, standing out in Oklahoma's finest basketball players, we have Angel Goodrich of Sequoia, was recently awarded the Elite Eight Award by News Channel 8 in Tulsa. This award recognizes outstanding basketball and leadership skills among eastern Oklahoma's basketball players. Eight boys and eight girls were nominated during the months of January and February and was voted on by viewers. The school's winner was awarded $1,000 from Ford Motor Company. Sequoia Schools also has a junior classman who is getting a head start on his future education and career goals by attending a summer session at the United States Military Academy, also known as West Point. Trey Francis has been selected to participate in the summer's leadership seminar at the prestigious military school. Trey attributes much of his academic success in edu to the education and encouragement that he has received from his teachers at Sequoia. I also want to graduate, uh, congratulate the Sequoia girls slow pitch team who two weeks ago brought home the silver trophy in their first trip to the state tournament. They came in state championship runner up. I'd like to also uh, announce uh, that we honored nine outstanding Cherokee citizens for their dedication to the Cherokee people and culture with the Principal Chief's Leadership Award several weeks ago. These leadership awards are given annually in recognition of Cherokee citizens who demonstrate leadership and a giving spirit. This year's recipients were Jack D. Baker, Lorene Hummingbird Bates, Jack Christie, Karen Fourkiller, Ice Killer, uh, posthumously Harold Jiggs Phillips, Curtis Rohr, Benny Smith, and Laverne Carpenter Stone. And if any of you are here, would you please stand at this time? Curtis and Jack. Thank you each. Of course, language is in itself a way of life for Cherokee people. And the Cherokee Nation recently held a language fair in conjunction with the 35th Annual Symposium on the American Indian held at Northeastern State University. This was a very successful language fair with many students from grades preschool to 12 participating and demonstrating the impressive skills of the Cherokee language. On the jobs front, Cherokee Nation Industries, and perhaps stealing some of the thunder from uh, uh, see, uh, Brian, is, has created more than 80 new jobs to support its beam, aerospace, and defense manufacturing division, and even more jobs could be on the horizon. These new jobs will allow CNI to keep up with increasing business demands. We also have several employees recognized by, from outside organizations for their dedication and service to their professions and their communities. During the Tahlequah Chamber of Commerce banquet last week, we had three of our uh, employees honored, and one of those is just an outstanding asset to the tribe and the Talking Leaves Job Corps is Joyce Rose. Would you stand, Joyce?
Jack Cobb is ready to serve. Deborah Lack, the finance manager for Talking Leaps Job Corps, received the Chamber Ambassador of the Year Award. And Deborah, are you here? Thank you. And Kelly Swim, a paramedic with Cherokee Nation EMS, received the Arius Medic of the Year Award. And I think this is uh, the second time she's received that. So, Kelly, are you here? She is not. Several of our health service employees will be honored in July at the Area Director's Award Ceremony in Oklahoma City. We'd like to recognize these outstanding employees for their years of service. Sandra Peak, 35 years of, uh, of service. Emma Ketcher, 30 years of service. Sue Crawler, 30 years of service. Barbara Williams, 30 years of service. Richard Soldier, K. John Drow, Brandy Marquez, Amy Hicks, Jamie Clark, Carla Keim, Terry Ross, Kendra Morgan, Nita Cochran, and Kim, uh, all those received a peer award from the Indian Health Service, nominated by their peers in excellence of their professions. Also, Kim Osborne received the Merit Award from the Muskogee Clinics for the Diabetes Program. So if each of you will stand and let us recognize you. Go ahead, stand. Very Thank you very much. And in announcements and of community acknowledgments, the Strawberry Festival is a great success. The Cherokee Nation will hold a recruitment fair on May 17th at the Northeastern State University Muskogee campus to fill do dozens of new job openings that will be available at the tribe's new Three Rivers Health Center. Uh, positions that will be open will be, include primary care, nursing, dental, behavioral health, physical therapy, pharmacy, radiology, lab optometry, information referral, facility su support, and administration. We encourage everyone to attend the election gatherings, and we have a vote coming up on June 23rd. There will be a principal chief and deputy principal chief debate on June 15th at 6 p.m. at the Armory Municipal Center, and that's uh, sponsored by our newspaper. Uh, and I would like to advise uh, the council and to our citizens that uh, as a result of the March 3rd election on requirements for citizenship, those that uh, uh, were uh, no longer citizens, a class sometimes called freedmen and intermarried whites, under our laws appealed of that decision, that constitutional amendment as it applied to them. In our registration process, there's an, a, a, a way to appeal that decision, and our process is working. Around 230 uh, freedmen have appealed the uh, uh, withdrawal of their citizenship, and that case is now in our tribal courts. Our courts, uh, on motion of our attorney general, moved to appoint a, an attorney for this class of folks. Of that attorney is of, of Nathan Young, and today he filed and was granted a temporary order and temporary injunction to allow the freedmen to continue receiving services and to vote in the upcoming election. Now, the Cherokee people voted and expressed their opinion and their will very clearly on the March 3rd election. 77% said that you had to have at least one ancestor on the base roll, an Indian ancestor on the base roll, to be a citizen of the Cherokee Nation. In the last 30 years, it's the third time that vote has been brought to the people. But what this demonstrates for the Cherokee Nation as a government, that the processes of our government are open to all, that our court systems are open to all, and that we are a fair and just uh, government. And so this case will work through our system, and our courts will make those decisions. So with that, uh, I close my uh, State of the Nation. Thank you, Madam President. Next item uh, is action of unfinished business, and that is the uh, item that was added. It's the veto item covering the amendment to the General Corporation Act that was passed in Council last month, whereby the dividend was changed from 30 to 35 percent of net income. The action to be taken is to uh, either support uh, the override or 
um, support the override, support the uh, veto or override the veto. And it requires a majority vote. Is that correct, Todd? Majority? Two-thirds? Two-third two vote. Okay, I would entertain a motion to override. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Any discussion? All in favor, uh, yes is you support the override. No is you do not. All, right, all in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. No. 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 Uh, roll call. Yes is for override. Bill Angren? No. Bill John Baker? Yes. Jack Baker? No. Audra Connor? Yes. Joe Crittenden? Yes. Meredith Fraley? No. Don Garvin? No. Chuck Hoskin? Yes. Bill Johnson? No. Taylor Keene? Yes. John Keener? Yes. Jackie Bob Martin? No. Linda O'Leary? Yes. Nelvana Shop Pouch? Yes. David Thornton? Yes. Carol Cowan Watt? No. Phyllis Yargy? Yes. Ten yay. Ten yes. Seven no. Seven no. The motion fails. Um, next order of business is old business and, oh no, it's committee report, sorry. Uh, I'm trying to hurry. A housing authority, uh, Mr. Sutherland, David Sutherland. Good evening, David. A brief report for you all this evening. Uh, our May board meeting is scheduled for tomorrow evening at 5.30. It's in Catoosa. Uh, it's in the St. Andrews room at the resort pro shop. Uh, the meeting coincides with the Southern Plains Indian Housing Association spring meeting that they're having up at the casino. Um, a couple of items that the board uh, will discuss uh, is on some property we own and uh, our future uses of that property. Uh, we have 20 acres in prior. Uh, we acquired in the mid-90s. Uh, we acquired that to build what's called family self-sufficiency homes. Uh, after we bought the property and before we could build any houses, Congress rescinded the money. So. Uh, we've had the property, but we've never developed it. Uh, there's uh, a lot of interest, had a lot of interest lately in that property, people wanting to acquire it, uh, I think probably because of the uh, action going on over at the industrial park, a lot of activity over there. Uh, we're also looking at our warehouse property just up the street. Uh, since rehab's moved under the nation's direction, uh, direction our, our need for the warehouse facilities kind of uh, decreased. So, uh, we'll talk with the board on that and see uh, what their direction is. Uh, the Indian Housing Block Grant Program is up for reauthorization, as I've uh, uh, reported in the past. Um, uh, with any reauthorization, there's a push to uh, revise language, and this reauthorization is no exception. And um, The revisions that uh, being monitored uh, right now, there's really not a whole lot of negative or in, uh, positive impact uh, for us. Uh, so we'll continue to monitor that. For good or bad, see what who tries to slip in what at the last minute. Uh, Congressman Bourne introduced the reauthorization of the Section 184 Loan Guarantee Program, and it was passed by the House. Uh, that's important to us. We uh, utilize that program with our mortgage assistance program, uh, as do many Native Americans in Oklahoma. Uh, we've getting calls, uh, you know, a couple of weeks from different tribes that are that are interested in what we're doing with the 184 and how we incorporate that into our mortgage assistance. And our program is, the mortgage assistance program is doing very well. We're averaging almost 20 families a month receiving assistance, um, uh, which, you know, computes to 240 a year, which is a lot of folks uh, getting into housing. Uh, that's my report for the evening. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Thank you. Next uh, report is Cherokee Nation Enterprises, David Stewart. Good evening. Well, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here to report uh, to you this evening. Uh, I have to, again, tribute uh, the results to all of our employees. Uh, we have another record in the history of C&E. Uh, almost, our net income has almost exceeded 
uh, for one month our annual income that we earned in 2001 and almost 2002. So our 3,000 employees, 71% uh, of which are native, have done an excellent job, and I just can't say enough about their hard work. Our projects are going well. Uh, the parking garage, uh, if you've been by, is a massive building. is about to open in June in preparation for the tower that will be is still under design, uh, projected to open in uh, December of 08. The soft opening of the Travel Plaza uh, occurred uh, several weeks ago. So stop by there. They're still uh, stocking all of the racks and getting all the bugs worked out, but it is open. Uh, and we still have some dirt work there to do and finish the, uh, to finish the rolling casino, but it is open. Uh, the dirt work at West Siloam has started, and it's a little bit chaotic, but uh, drive by and you'll see lots of activity. Uh, our dividend uh, last month was almost $3.3 million, and in addition, we paid almost 80000 in sales tax to the tribe. So uh, that's my report. I'd be glad to answer any questions. Uh, Larry, do you have the information I requested uh, regarding the contract uh, for electric over silo? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, you let to be the city? Uh, yes, I can. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, comments? <laughs> thank you, David. Okay, thank you. Cherokee Nation Industries, uh, Brian Collins. Mm -hmm. I was over at your place today, and they were busy. Well, good, good. <laughs> well, good evening, Council. Good evening. Chief. Reporting on uh, tonight on April's uh, financials. Uh, before I start on that, though, I would like to report, you know, the TQG program is a very successful program. We've been running for about 10 years, and that's TQG is a tactical quiet generators that the Army uses. And there's been... Um, our, our customers, L3, and they notified us that you know, about two weeks ago we, uh, they delivered, which we have a big integral piece of that product, uh, they delivered their 7,000th unit to the Army with no returns. And that's just a level of quality and the commitment, and it's just excellent work that, that, that that's going into that product. And that, uh, that program has, like I said, it's been going for 10 years and supports around 35 employees. And it will run out for another, uh, I believe it goes out to 2012. So it's a good program for us. Um, and these are the type of programs that we're going after. The Cherokee name, what I'm finding is that the Cherokee name is um, very highly respected in the military. Um, we get many, many calls. And that's why you're seeing a lot of growth. As you know, the chief reported, we had a press release. We've added over 80 jobs. There's more jobs to add. Uh, it's about how we apply our resources. And uh, like I say, there's many opportunities for additional growth. Uh, we've had some new success as well that we'll be executing and implementing some new programs that will also be adding some jobs later this summer. Um, so anyway, that's one item. I hope you guys had the opportunity to come to Stillwell this weekend, get some strawberries if you haven't got any. You may be too late. It's getting close. Um, but anyway, as of April, monthly sales, uh, $7.8 million. Uh, the total sales year-to-date, $88 million, uh, which is 10%, still tracking 10% greater than last year. Uh, profitability, uh, $1.9 million. Local employment in the Tahlequah Stillwell area is 316, which 276 are Native American, which would be about 87%. Our next board of director meeting has been changed. It was the 29th. It's going to be moved to the 31st at 3 o'clock in Catoosa. Uh, more than likely, it'll be at the CNB uh, conference room. But for those that will be attending, I know the advisory council and our board members will be uh, finalizing that tomorrow and send out an email tomorrow morning. Uh, this completes my report. If you have any questions. Questions? Comments? Guess not, Brian. Thank, Thank you. you. Tricky Nation Businesses, uh, Jim Carrington is reporting for Brad Carson. Jim is Associate Counsel for uh, Cherokee Nation Businesses. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks for having me back. Uh, as she mentioned, uh, Mr. Carson, he's on uh, military leave for a couple of months, a couple of weeks. He, he thought that was months. He'd be surprised. But I think every summer he goes a couple of weeks military leave for training. 
Um, so in the meantime, there have really been no material developments since uh, Mr. Carson was introduced at the council meeting uh, two or three weeks ago. Uh, I will let you know that our uh, CNB board meeting has been scheduled for June the 2nd in Catoosa at 9 in the morning. And uh, in Mr. Carson's absence, I probably can answer any questions if you have any until he returns. And he will be at the council meeting uh, next week. Any questions, comments for Mr. Carrington? Thank you, Jim. Thanks Appreciate for having it. me. Next order of business is old business, and there's none pending, so we move on down to new business. The first item is a resolution submitting a proposal to the uh, U.S. Department of Health and Human Services for an all-inclusive elderly care program, and that's Ms. Shop Pouch. Second. Move to the second. Any discussion? Any discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item two is a resolution submitting a grant application to HUD for um, family and home ownership. Um, shop pouch. Oh, no, that's <coughs> Connor. Sorry. <laughs> The purpose of this resolution is to develop and submit a new funding application for continuation of the Resident Opportunity and Self-Sufficiency, known as the Ross Program, <coughs> Home Ownership. Uh, the current program funds vocational training opportunities for housing residents, and the new funding request will be developed to provide employment activities to housing residents, leading to unsubsidized employment and ultimately home ownership. Uh, the grant is uh, for approximately 500000 uh, with an in kind uh, match of 125. So, with that, I've moved to approve. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item three is a resolution authorizing an application for funding to the Oklahoma Office of Juvenile Affairs, and that's Ms. Shopout. And this is a contract between Turkey Nation and Oklahoma Office of Juvenile Affairs for the John A. Ketcher Center. And I put that in a form of motion. Second. Thank you. Moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item four is the resolution of adopting a maintenance and operating policy. Uh, Michelle Pouch. Uh, I put that in a form of motion. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item 5 is a resolution submitting an application to administer a grant for build community buildings. Ms. Shotpatch. And this will also construct a new water treatment plant for Kenwood, and I'll put that in form of motion. Moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item 6 is a resolution submitting a grant application for training and technical assistance to, uh, for community organizations. Ms. Shop Pouch. This will serve about 20 community organizations. Uh, each community will gain a minimum of 20 skills a year across five skill areas, and I'll put that in for a motion. Okay. Moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Item 7 is a resolution submitting um, an amended fiscal year 2007 Indian housing plan to HUD. Ms. Shop Pouch. This submitted uh, 2007 Indian housing plan to HUD based on the actual amount to be received. I'll put that in form of motion. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item 8 is a resolution authorizing a business lease between Cherokee Nation and the Kenwood community. Mr. Councilor Martin. Thank you, <coughs> Madam Speaker. Uh, the, the request set forth in the attached resolution is for the leasing of the Kenwood community building and ballpark. The lease will expire in June of 07, and the Kenwood Community Association has requested to lease the property again for another five years for a dollar per year. The group will be responsible for the maintenance and upkeep of the unit. The association has programs for the elders as well as, well as for children. Community building is used for other activities also, and I would move for approval. Second. Any, second. Any discussion? Any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item 9. 
Ms. Uh, Mr. Martin, did you want to do item 9 through 13 you, um, in total? Yes, Madam Chair, and I've lost my notes that, that I had pertaining to that, but these are. Uh, thank you. These are all grant 9, 9 10, 11, 12, 13, and uh, number 9 is the, to continue monitoring air quality at 5 monitoring stations. Grant amount is 800,000 no max. Item 10 is to continue monitoring water quality and service water within the Cherokee Nation of Questions for 140,750. $7,368 in time max will be met by the Cherokee Nation Environmental Program Administrative Budget. Item 11 is for Indian General Assistance Program support grant covering the planning and coordination of EPA Region 6 meeting in FY08 and also provide travel reimbursement. Request is for 50000 no match. Item 12 is for application for Indian General Assistance covering four through six environmental training per year for three years for our environmental staff. Grant amount is 200000 no match. Item 13, submit an application for Indian General Assistance covering support for core environmental capacity building also to fund the hosting of the EPA Regional Six Environmental Sub Summit Request is for 290000 no metric match required. And I would move for approval of these Second. five items. <clears throat> Moved and seconded. Any discussion on items 9 through 13? All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, same <clears throat> sign. Motion <clears throat> carries. Item 14 is a resolution authorizing the placement of land and trust on Ross Road, uh, the 255 acres. Uh, Mr. Martin. Thank you, <clears throat> Madam Speaker. The purpose of this resolution is to authorize placement of the United States of America and trust for Cherokee Nation of 255 and third acre tract of land referred to as Ross Road, uh, 255 third acres. The tract of land is mostly open pasture and is quarter mile south of Interstate 40 in Muskogee County line to the west of Ross Road. It is within the mandatory trust acquisition area provided to the Cherokee Nation in public law 107-331 known as the Arkansas River Bed Settlement Act. And I would move for approval. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Uh, yes, Mr. Garvin. I'd like to agree with uh, Councilman Martin. This is the ideal piece of property that sits on a uh, 64 Highway is just about a quarter of a mile from I-40. <coughs> it's a perfect piece of property. I don't know who to congratulate that somebody did a great job of buying this property and uh, it'll go into trust almost <coughs> automatically because of the Arkansas River settlement. So congratulations to those that worked on this. Thank you, Mr. Garvin. Any other comments or questions? All in favor of item 14 signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item 15 is an amendment to Title 20 relating to court rules and jurisdiction. Uh, Councilor Keene. Yes, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, this act known as the Judicial Reform and Jurisdiction Act of 2006. Uh, the purpose is to establish the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court over constitutional matters, specifically uh, intra-governmental disputes and uh, any matters regarding elections. It also codifies the name of um, JAT to the Supreme Court of the Cherokee Nation and then allows us uh, to adopt the rules of the court. I'll put that in the form of a motion for approval. Second. Moved and second. And any discussion? Any discussion? This is an act. Roll call. <coughs> Phyllis Yargy? Yes. Kara Cowan Watts? Yes. David Thornton? Yes. Lionel Shophouse? Yes. Linda O'Leary? Yes. Jackie Bob Martin? Yes. John Keener? Yes. Taylor Keene? Yes. Bill Johnson? Yes. Chuck Koskin? Yes. John Garvin? Yes. Meredith Fraley? Yes. Joe Crittenden? Here. Audra Connor? Yes. Jack Baker? Yes. Bill John Baker? Yes. Bill Anglin? Yes.
Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Keene, for bringing that forward. Item 16 is a resolution submitting a grant application to the Department of Education. Mr. Hoskin. Thank you, Madam Speaker. This resolution authorizes the development and submission of a grant application to the Department of Education for a Native American Career and Technical Education Program, and I put this in the form of a motion. Second. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? Any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item 17 is an act amending fiscal year 2007 budget. It would be Mod 7. Mr. Leary. Yes. Uh, yes, this uh, budget, Mod 7, includes uh, WIC infrastructure grants, a capital project, IHL step governance, GP ops, uh, contingency reserves, emergency rehabs, RN scholarships, Muskogee Health Clinics, as well as a, as a multitude of other projects that's going on. That brings the total budget authority to $412.5 million. Can I put that in form of motion? Second. With an amendment. Second. With the second. Oh, the, you know, it's, not, it's a technical amendment, so I don't think it requires a vote, but we, got, we have received the uh, minutes, and I brought this up at the last meeting, that clarifies the language was... Um, there's two places. There's the actual act. We're in section 4A. It should refer to the 1.2 million, 1.253865, as an increase in the defense budget. And then on the memo on B Mod 7 General Fund 1 under Constitutional Defense. Fund, um, it should refer to the verbiage at the very top of the meeting minutes in the exec special executive and finance meeting. Are we called to order where uh, Ms. Melanie Knight states that, she, that there's a request for an additional 520000 for them to defend the constitutional amendment they had by way of special election on March 3rd. So just to clarify, it's a defense budget. Okay. It's already included in Mod 7. Okay. It's it was included in Mod 7, and so yes. what, what was your... I just want to make sure that the language is technically okay. clarified. All right. Um, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? This is an act. Uh, roll call. Taylor Keene. Abstain. John Keener. Dr. Bob Martin? Yes. Linda O'Leary? Yes. Melvina Shop Pouch? Yes. David Thornton? Yes. Eric Allen Watts? Yes. Emily Sharji? Yes. Gil Anglin? Yes. Gil John Baker? Yes. Jack Baker? Yes. Audra Connor? Yes. Joe Crittenden? Yes. Meredith Bailey? Yes. Don Garvin? Yes. Eric Hoskins? Yes. Bill Johnson? Yes. 15 yes and 2 abstentions. 15 yes and 2 abstentions. Motion carries. Okay, next item, our announcement. announcement. Yes. Tonight, uh, they are dedicating the ball fields at the uh, on the other side of Sequoia. There's free hot dogs and drinks and and the employees are having some uh, intercompany ball games for your entertainment. And so anybody that is available is welcome to, to go up and participate in the celebration uh, immediately after this. Madam Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Baker. Yes, Mr. Johnson. Uh, I'd like to introduce a special guest tonight, Sheriff Meeting. Uh, the granddaughter of Chief W. W. Keeler, Arthur Keeler. Please stand. Welcome, Honor. I understand you've been with a, uh, working in a law firm in Washington, D.C.? Uh, yes, I have been in uh, Mexico, though, for a law school. Uh, yeah, I've been University of New Mexico. Congratulations. Uh, Ms. Connor. 
Uh, yes, I would just like to remind everyone also that um, there are several high school graduations coming up this week. Um, Sequoia High School graduates this Friday the 18th. I believe Locust Grove uh, is also graduating. Stillwell, I believe, is graduating. These are just a couple of schools that I work with. Um, and so I would just like to take this opportunity to uh, congratulate all those graduates and, and wish them success on their uh, future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you. Any other announcements? Move to adjourn. Second. Have you also been saying to adjourn? Any special? All in favor, aye. Aye. Both same side. Thank you. Bring them to spare.